Can you even believe how fantastic this zebra is? Today we are going to go on an adventure to Aurora, Oregon, and Jesse and I are going to be doing some Christmas shopping. We love to give thrifted and antique gifts to our friends and family, and it makes the shopping season extra fun because we're on the hunt for specific things, but also it's very nostalgic when you're going antique shopping and you're looking around on the shelves and all of a sudden you just see something and you didn't even know it was going to be the perfect gift, but as soon as you see it, you know it's the perfect gift. So today we are taking you to one of our favorite towns to go antiquing in, Aurora, Oregon. <laughs> Gotta put this on wide angle. They moved the giant horse up here to the front because it's pulling the sleigh for Christmas. I love it. <laughs> Some of these exact same red wooden beads and I typically use them on a dresser or on a bookshelf but I'm loving the way that they have them hung. I probably would hang one at a time but I'm thinking maybe of doing something similar to this with mine this year. Maybe I'll do three different rows and I can kind of make a little bit of an art piece out of it. Okay I think we might have to get this one for our collection. It's only $14, maybe this one too. And then we can add in some of the blue colors. Those are in really good shape. Yeah, we're gonna get those too. Well, what about this one? That one's really cute too. Maybe we're gonna get all three of them. I have a wonderful collection of the vintage Japanese Christmas houses. And this is not a vintage one, it is somewhat newer, but I thought it was so beautiful. I have a lot of the shorter putts houses, but I really wanted some of the taller churches. So I selected my three favorites, and I think this is gonna be perfect to decorate with for Christmas. I can't wait to share that episode with you. I'm doing a very Scandinavian Christmas this year, which is a little bit different than things that I've done in the past, and I'm just really excited with how it's coming together. And the three of these that I got are gonna be the perfect addition to my other vintage putts houses. This is a hammered copper and brass brutalist candle holder slash vase. I like pieces like this that can be used for either. You can add in water and a little flower to use it as a beautiful vase, or it can fit a candle in it and you can add it to a mixed matched candle collection. So this one will be coming to the January 1st Friday sale. Can you even believe how fantastic this zebra is? This is one of my favorite finds that I have found in so many months. I am so stinking excited about this vase. I think it is absolutely wild. It really makes me think of 1960s kind of dramatic Hollywood Regency mixed with a very like postmodern kind of pop art style. And I think it's just gonna be an absolute blast to decorate with. Would you have picked this up or would you have just walked away and left this amazing piece on the shelf? I looked this guy up online and even though it is handmade and signed, I believe that the original piece unpainted was available for purchase and then you could paint it in your own way and that is why they look slightly different and are signed with different names when you see these online. So I'm a huge fan of having that one wild piece in a vignette and I was just thinking about how cool this would look with the Mufasa Hager lines 
frame that I got a few weeks ago. This is a vintage Hager piece and he is so amazing. Doesn't he look like Mufasa? I just love him so much. You know I have a thing for lions. But I think that might be a little bit over the top having two wild pieces in the same vignette. Yeah, I love this guy. I'm not gonna be selling this one anytime soon. He is going to the new design studio. And note that I did not say he's going to the storage for the future design studio. I am so excited to share that I finally got a shop after 10 years of shipping vintage out of my garage at home. I finally have a real studio space and I will give you guys a little peek of the blank slate at the end of the video and tell you a little bit about what my hopes and dreams are with that studio space. I'm in love with this round clock. So it says it's a wind up, 3750. It looks very old. And then on the back, it says made in England. I just think this is beautiful. I think we're gonna get it. Freestanding clocks are one of my favorite things to use when you're decorating a bookshelf. I have a lot of mid-century modern clocks already in my collection, but I really wanted to expand that with the new design studio and have other pieces that bring in a little bit more of a traditional feel. This is a beautiful English art deco clock. This one reminded me so much of the Beauty and the Beast, that it was a very, very beautiful clock. And for that price, I just couldn't pass it up. So now that I've already told you about the design studio, I can share a little bit more of why I picked up some of these pieces. I am super excited about sharing a lot more design content using vintage and antique finds, especially awesome pieces from thrift stores. And one of the things that I'm wanting to do with that studio space is to share a wide variety of antiques and vintage and all of the different ways and styles that you can decorate with. Now, you know that I love lions. I've been obsessed with big cats my entire life and my most recent travels to Europe really solidified that I wanted more lions throughout my home. I love that old world European feel and I thought that the detail on this mirror is just beautiful. Now this doesn't quite fit with my mid-century Scandinavian kind of style that I have going on at home, but that doesn't mean that I don't love it and want to decorate with it. And this new design studio is gonna be a space for me to do exactly that. It's gonna be a place where I can be creative and really explore design on a further level than just in my own home. You are gonna be seeing this in an upcoming gallery wall design episode. What I'm really wanting to do with the gallery wall episode is show you a ton of different ways that you can do a gallery wall, including one with this beautiful mirror. Another piece that I picked up for the gallery wall episode, this beautiful wall sconce. I don't know if this is East Lake. It looks very, very similar to East Lake pieces. I'll have to do a little bit of research on it, but I loved how large this section was. Most candle holder wall sconces do not have a base that is big enough to put a potted plant where it's gonna be nice and safe. And I thought that this is gonna be absolutely beautiful with a potted plant overflowing with beautiful greenery mixed into a gallery wall. I love pine needle baskets. This is the most elaborate one I have ever seen. It even has handles. Pine needle basket, probably Southwestern, $105. That is so fun. For yourself? Yeah. 
Jesse got himself a George Harrison record. There are not very many Beatles records that Jesse doesn't have, so that was pretty exciting for him to be able to find this one, and it was only $5. I love George. He's so wonderful. Hey, I found a gift. I'm getting gifts for myself today. <laughs> I'm gonna get this for Natalie. She uses these little molds to make um, little ceramic pieces. They're butter molds. This one says a rice pastry mold, um, but I know Maya said that these work great for her little ceramic pieces. This one's gonna be for my sister-in-law. She makes little clay pieces of jewelry out of old butter molds. And I thought the two flowers were really beautiful. I'm gonna put together a little bit of a gift basket to add this to. <laughs> Three Daisies Vintage, there's an upstairs area that is owned by Lynn of PDX Estate Services, and she brings in some amazing pieces that are from her estate clearouts. And I got this set of Art Nouveau bookends for only $35 for the set. That is an incredible price for pieces that are this old. I think they're so beautiful. I love them. And they're this beautiful patinaed copper, but they don't have any of the green spots, so that's always good. $35 for the set. I think these are worth well over a hundred. So that was a great deal. I think this would be cute to put on one of the presents for maybe Emma. It's $10 and then they can use it as an ornament. I love to wrap a Christmas gift with something that can be reused. And so for my nieces and nephews this year, I wanted to find something that I could put to decorate the top of their gifts with that could also be either added to the Christmas tree or added to their playroom or even just repurposed on another Christmas gift next year. This one's gonna end up on my three-year-old niece Emma's Christmas gift. And I just think it's so cute. He's eating his little watermelon. Next up, we are gonna go check out Aurora Antiques, which is right next door to Three Daisies Vintage. One of the things I love about buying and selling vintage is that I'm constantly going through different phases. I will learn about an object or an item made in a specific country or made a specific way, and then I get obsessed with it. And lately my obsession has been Mexican folk art paper mache. She is really interesting. I love the use of all the fun colors on her. I have been doing so much research trying to figure out what this swirl means and I haven't been able to find the artist. So if you happen to know this specific artist or even what region in Mexico that this was probably made in, I would love that information and be super grateful for any pointers in the right direction. Designer paper mache pieces can be worth a lot of money. I've recently had several Sergio Bustamante, oh man, I'm gonna butcher that name, I'm so sorry, Bustamante 
please correct me, I'm sure you will. I don't know how to say his last name, but Sergio. I recently found two of his lions and they are just so beautiful. So I thought that she was really cool and I love her eye makeup. She's got blue eyeshadow on with her blue eyes. Really pretty, really unique, really different. And I'm all about that. Look at this art deco clock. It's got birds flanking the clock and it's like this really beautiful white onyx with gold vein. So pretty. Whitehall Hammond. Interesting. Never seen that one before. It's beautiful. 350. What's so great about Aurora, Oregon is all of the stores are walkable. It is such a cute little town. We're gonna go to the Little Black Dog Vintage down here. Just follow the pathway. I was just telling you how I'm gonna be doing a Scandinavian Christmas theme this year, and I thought that this beautiful hand-painted candelabra was gonna be the perfect addition. When I think of Christmas, I think of that glowing candlelit evening where you're just kind of all cozy and you're listening to Christmas music, and I don't think that you can have too many candles in a space. You just have to be safe with them. It's got a Made in Sweden sticker on the bottom, and can you believe it was only eight 50 at an antique store. This is why I love going to antique stores, not only to buy gifts, but to find things for my online vintage shop. But what I love about going to antique stores is you can still find things for a complete bargain. $8.50 for this. But the most important part is you're supporting other resellers and you're supporting the small brick and mortar antique stores. And I am all about supporting small businesses of all skills, whether it's in store or whether it's online resellers. It just feels really wonderful to know that I'm supporting someone else's dream when I'm making these purchases. And it was only $8.50. I want to thank Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. If you are an online vintage reseller, now is the time to launch your own independent website and Squarespace makes it so easy. I have been selling my vintage finds for over eight years now on my Squarespace website. So I can honestly tell you with eight years of experience with Squarespace, I feel like I have grown with this company and I am so amazed constantly by all of the new features and products that they offer. So whether you are selling vintage home decor, handmade physical items, or even digital products, Squarespace has the tools to get you started selling online. And one of the most important features that I am constantly using are the mailing lists. There is no need to be paying a secondary website for your email list because with Squarespace, you can get the right message to the right people. You can collect email addresses through your website and send subscribers information that they care about the most. I cannot overstate the importance of this being being able to have a way to have direct communication with the people that want to hear what you have to say. Social media and other online platforms algorithms are constantly changing, but with your own Squarespace website, you will never have to worry about that. So if you are ready to start selling your vintage finds in your own online store, visit squarespace.com to start your free trial today. And when you are ready to launch your own website, head to squarespace.com slash left coast for 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Thanks again to Squarespace for sponsoring today's video. Little uh, um, last winter was Waikiki stir sticks. Fantastic. For we keep everything. shopping for ourselves. We're supposed to be shopping for other people. Well, What's wrong with us? I, I'm a lot easier to shop for myself. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get our own Christmas presents. <laughs> I know a lot of you have been wondering what's going on in the bomb shelter. We have not found a bar yet for that space. Jesse has been squirreling away pieces that he wants to decorate that space with, but it is not finished and I don't know when it's going to be finished, but I promise you from what he has said, it's going to be worth waiting for. Decorating with 100% secondhand finds means that you have to be patient. And I know it's hard sometimes um, when we're all excited excited about seeing a space, but we just want to do it right. And um, there's been a couple bars 
that he almost got that were close, but when it came down to actually purchasing it, he just knew that it was not the right piece and he didn't want to regret it and upgrade later. He wants to just do it right from the start. And I'm excluded from the majority of the decisions and the items that are going into that space, but he has found a couple of them when I've been with him. So I do know a few things. He got these little vintage plastic Waikiki alcohol stir sticks for the space. So a lot of you know that we do an annual tiki party and it kind of is looking like he might have some tiki items down in that space. So I'm kind of excited about that. And for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about when I'm referring to the bomb shelter, it is a cellar in the basement of our home that my husband is in charge of decorating and turning into a mid-century bar. So the little stir sticks are going to his stash. She is incredible. She is probably the largest Japanese Kokeshi doll that I have picked up. She's a little bit more modern made than the ones that I typically pick up at vintage stores. I love these dolls. They are completely handmade and hand painted. And I'm gonna link a couple videos in the description that I've watched in the past that are really, really insightful to show you how these beautiful dolls are crafted in Japan. I have such an appreciation for handmade items and I hope someday, someday, to host a trip to Japan where we're going to be able to get to go and actually see how some of these items are made in person. On that note, I would be so curious to know if any of you guys would be interested in possibly joining me on a trip to Japan. I know that we're not going to be able to make it happen in 2023, but at the new studio, I have an entire wall that is dedicated for my hopes and dreams. And one of the first things I'm going to be putting up on that wall are some beautiful pictures of Kyoto and Tokyo. And I'm going to be hopefully manifesting that to come to life. So if you would ever be interested in joining me on a trip to Japan, please let me know in the comments below. And I'm going to start doing some researching on local locations and places we might want to visit. This is an original signed lithograph and the value online looked like it was pretty good. So I felt like this was a very good investment. I don't typically pick up a piece of signed art, whether it's an original painting or a lithograph, unless I love the art. And I loved all of the colors in this piece. The original art piece was made in 1939. And it's always extra awesome when you find a piece that actually has been framed really well. So this has a beautiful gold frame that's really sturdy and still in great condition. I'm going to be using this one in our gallery wall episode and then it will come for sale in the January first Friday sale. Oh. Three fifty? They got burgers and fries for three fifty. Coming for the burgers. Sorry, sorry, no burgers available. I love it that they've got to be clear. <laughs> it's a cool sign though. <laughs> you, you just turned the so grill off. Awesome. <laughs> he really wants a burger. <laughs> oh, but look, there's snacks. Wow, Krispy Kreme donuts. So Jesse just went upstairs and I found these Portland Trailblazers mugs. I think that these would be perfect for beer mugs. There's a set of four of them. So I'm gonna quietly go sneak these at the front counter and pay for them, hopefully before he realizes, because I think that this would be a good Christmas gift for him. So I'm gonna get these as a Christmas gift for my husband who's with me. Is there any chance we could wrap them up and have you hold them here for yes, me? Yes, Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. And then just maybe add it to the end when we find some other stuff, if that's okay. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. I think we're good. Jesse totally didn't see what I got. He had no idea that I got him a gift until we were already getting ready to leave. And I got the set of four of these Trailblazer mugs. He's a big Portland Trailblazer fan. And we see the Dairy Queen cups all the time, but you don't see the beer mugs very often. So I think that he's gonna love these. This is always one of my very favorite spaces in this entire vintage store. And you can see why. Got some good stuff. I think 
I'm gonna get the Kermit the Frog phone. No, you're not. For my office. No, you're not. Then you'd have to pay for a landline. No, I just. Who's gonna call you? <laughs> That's true. Nobody calls me. <laughs> Behind the color wheel. No, no. What is it? Is it a spider? No. Oh. California <laughs> raisin. <laughs> what on earth? <laughs> You scared me. <laughs> so bizarre, I keep seeing all of this Irish pottery today. It's only $10, I think I'm gonna get these. That's a really good deal. And I know that this is really collectible. These are not something that I actually collect for my personal home, but I think that they're absolutely beautiful and I know that these are very collectible. I keep coming across the cups and saucers and cream and sugar bowls, but I have never come across the salt and pepper shakers. I know how hard it is to find a complete set and for any of you who collect the Irish porcelain, I wanted you to be able to have a salt and pepper shaker too. So much ombre, so much ombre. Look at this. They have more than I do. That's amazing. This is kind of fun, that's like stained glass. 1970s martini pitcher set. These aren't martini cups. Where's the martini cups? Remember when I didn't know the saying, when pigs fly? And I was like, why do pigs have wings all the time? <laughs> yeah, didn't know it. Homeschooled, lots of things I didn't know. bedroom makeover I'm trying to find some little pops of color that will tie in a lot of the different colors and I think that would work let's see how much it is that might make the determining factor I like it because it's kind of traditional a little bohemian probably not as much her style 23 floral clock made in Spain I think that it would tie in a little bit of eclectic style with her contemporary style we are gonna get that I'm working on a bedroom makeover for my sister's room. She actually leaves in a week to go to the Philippines for three weeks to visit family and I'm going to be doing the entire makeover during that period. It's kind of fun to have a set. Okay, go. You've got three weeks. Get this done. And I've been picking at pieces left and right every time I go out thrifting, every time I'm on Facebook Marketplace, I'm looking for pieces for my sister's bedroom. And in that space, I'm gonna be doing a little bit more of a traditional style than I typically decorate with, which is really fun for me to do something different. And this clock is a beautiful little hand-painted clock. And I think it's really gonna tie in some of the pieces that I already have purchased for that space. And her sheets are this gold color. And I think that this is gonna tie together a lot of the different colors that I'm gonna be bringing in the room. And I love having a couple pieces throughout the room that pull it all together and even though this is very small and it's just gonna be on a little tabletop I thought that it's gonna be a beautiful clock to add to that space you can hear the creaking from upstairs we're in such an old building but I really wanted to say how much I appreciate this vendor they lay all of their jewelry out really clear and you can read the price tags so you don't have to go and get someone to come and open the case just to find out how much it cost good job also I think that we need to get this bracelet look at those beautiful flowers
You know I love my bohemian embroidered pillows. This one is gonna go beautifully with one that I got at the Rose City Vintage Market during their summer market. That one was a little bit larger and I'm pretty sure that these are gonna look beautiful together. I really loved the design on it and all of the different colors. I am just such a lover of hand embroidered pillows. Well, that went pretty good. I got Jesse a Christmas present. What? I got you a Christmas present you didn't even see. Oh man, <laughs> I didn't. I got gotcha. you. He has no idea. The lady there was so great, she hid it for me and he has no idea what it is. <laughs> what do you think it is? Um, a Don Friedman wand. <laughs> <laughs> I know um, you better than that, babe. A uh, beret? A beret. To me a beret, so we got matching <laughs> berets. Little retro. Look at this, isn't this cool? It's like here's your Atari. Oh and my. Like this old TV. It's a whole little setup. I know. Right? It's a whole vibe. That was fun. It's always so fun to go in there and see all of the amazing mid-century stuff. Boy, do I wish that I had those pom-poms for my Christmas tree. That'd be super fun. And that was cool seeing the green one too. I'm giving Jesse the full tour. Here are the bathrooms. And they have this beautiful room here in the back that you can rent for private parties. And it's got this amazing fireplace. Good food and a cozy environment. They have our wedding wine. You can't get it anywhere but here at Filberts that I know of. Well, they have the wine. I think they're really known for their pinot. Right? Not their I think they were. I love them. Oh, they have a sparkling and... white too. Oh, St. Joseph's sparkling thing. white. Yeah. Yes, the Lily sparkling Chardonnay. That's what we toasted to at our wedding. Yeah. Maybe we should toast to that. Mm -hmm. Look, they have a drink called the Antique Dealer. I don't really like vodka, especially not with espresso, but if you are a coffee drink lover, you gotta come get it. I got the shrimp linguine, which looks delicious shrimp. <laughs> Jesse got a meatloaf burger. Meatloaf sandwich. Oh, it's a sandwich. On a burger. On a burger. It's got meatloaf in it. Oh well, yeah. I've never meatloaf, had one. Meatloaf sandwich is underrated. Meatloaf sandwich, underrated, says Jesse. Underrated. You haven't eaten it yet, though. You don't even know. Just in general, meatloaf <laughs> sandwich. So as soon as you come in the door, over here is going to be a little kitchenette area. And this wall right here, I'm gonna use to have all of our inspiration and design boards and ideas for episodes and different places around the world. We wanna travel and potentially even host group travel trips. And I just wanna walk in the door and the first thing that you do is you get coffee and then you get inspired. And then you get to work over here. I'm going to be doing a beautiful wallpaper on this back wall and putting my office desk right here. And this is gonna be a little film studio. So a lot of times I will get back from my picking and I will film my haul here. All the walls will be painted. There's a lot of work to do, but I love that we have such a blank slate to start with and it's going to be fun to transform this space. Now I'm going to take you out into the warehouse section, which is going to be the shipping center and the design studio. We've got a big bay door here, which is great. So I can actually open this and then back the car in and unload my vintage hauls right directly to a shelving unit right here. Um, I've kind of perfected over the years how to store a ton of items in a small space in my garage at home, but I'm really excited to have a real system set up and in place and be very organized in a space that actually has room for the stuff. I haven't decided what's gonna happen over here on this wall. It may end up just being painted a couple different colors, maybe cut in half and paint one color here and one color there, and that can be used as a backdrop to decorate and stage. 
which maybe I'll even wallpaper that. That could be fun. And then all along here are gonna be shelving units for the vintage. And it's gonna start out with the vintage coming in and it needs to get processed and cleaned. And then it will get photographed in a station over here. And then it will get listed, measured and weighed and then shipped. I'm getting excited right now just thinking about being that organized. So here's the view looking back. This is the office. This is gonna be the shipping center and the vintage storage. And then over here is the reason I'm the most excited. This is gonna be the design center. It's a pretty big space and I'm actually going to be building out some faux walls here for staging and decorating. I think my goal is to be able to stage an entire room setup, like this whole section here. I want to be able to be an entire room. I love doing bookshelves and vignettes and my kitchen shelves at home. I absolutely love that, but I'm really excited to finally have a space that I can decorate in its entirety. And then I'll probably put more shelving units over here to store the items that I stage with because I have been collecting a lot of amazing vintage that is not for my personal collection, but that I didn't want to part with and sell because I really wanted to be able to have some awesome vintage to pull from in order to do different designs and incorporate with the new things that I'm finding. I'm going to do a couple different wallpaper, like pull down backdrops. I thought that might be kind of fun just to have different background options. So I think I'm going to keep this space open for that. I haven't decided if I'm going to wallpaper panels and maybe have them on like a sliding system or if I'm going to do a pull down system. So if anybody has ever done anything like that for photography, um, please let me know. I would love your advice in the comments below. And then over here we have the bathroom. It's nothing fancy, but it does have a nice little marble countertop and kind of a smoky gray cabinet. I'm sure at some point you will see me do a makeover on this space, but it might not be the top priority. Right now, the priority is to get moved in. Well, this was an absolute blast. Thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us in one of our very favorite towns, Aurora. We found some really great things and I got a couple Christmas gifts. I'm extra excited that I was able to sneak a Christmas gift for Jesse without him realizing. I have lots more Christmas shopping to do and I've got my sister's bedroom makeover that I've got to find more stuff for. So stay tuned this month for some more fun adventures out thrifting. Thank you for joining us today and I will see all of you in a brand new episode soon.